ladies, and welcome to Love Conquers All. Each week, we select three contestants to tell their true life stories of heartbreak and tragedy for your entertainment. The contestant whose story is judged the most heartrending and depressing wins the super giant stupendous jackpot as we all have a good, joyous cry. And so, let's meet this week's contestants. First, Mr. Frank Fox of California. Next, Miss Ethel Westbrook of Oklahoma. And last, Mr. Freddie Wilson of New York City. Oh, brother, what Freddie won't do to make a buck. Margie, I've got some big news. Shh, Dad, Freddy's on television. What show is it? How to Care for Juvenile Delinquents? All right. We'll begin with you, Mr. Wilson. Now, you must answer three questions. If you answer all three correctly, you will be given a chance at the super giant stupendous jackpot. Now, are you ready for number one? All right. What day of the week is this? Uh, it's Wednesday. Correct. You are absolutely right for $10. How about that, folks? I'm surprised he knows what day it is. They ask him where he lives, he's a dead fish. Oh, now don't be rough on poor Freddy. That's his new business venture. He's a professional contestant. He's made three quiz shows already this week. I want to see how he comes out. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Margie, don't you want to hear my good news? Well, sure, Dad, of course. What's the big buzz? Well, I just closed the whiting deal, and Mr. Honeywell is giving me a two weeks vacation as a bonus. He's going to come with me, and he says we can take you along, too. Now, how's that? Well, that's wonderful, Dad. But are you sure Mr. Honeywell wants me to go? That doesn't sound like the old dragon. Mr. Honeywell can be human at times, especially after he's made a big killing. And besides, I was responsible. So, where would you like to spend a nice two weeks winter vacation? Name it, and we'd go. You mean we can go any place and Mr. Honeywell pays the freight? Well, let's see now. We've been wanting to go to Bermuda for ages. Will the expense account stand the strain? Bermuda it is. Now, I'll go to the office and tell Mr. Honeywell he's Bermuda bound. We'll leave as soon as he gets the tickets. Dad, you're a walking, talking doll. Just give me time to check my tropical wardrobe and do some shopping to fill in the gaps. Oh, that figures, and it also goes on the expense account. <laughs> Margie, I'm in terrible trouble. Trouble? Why, Freddie, what happened? I just won the super giant stupendous jackpot. I don't dig you, Freddie boy. If you won the jackpot, why that sad cocker spaniel look? We'd better sit down, Margie. This is going to be a terrible shock. You see, the amount of money you win on Love Conquers All depends upon how miserable your story is. If you make one of the jury cry, you get $50. If you make two of them cry, you get $100. I made them all cry, including the MC. <laughs> a clean sweep, huh? Every sob a saw buck. So why are your little blue eyes clouding up to rain? Well, I, I didn't win any money. I won an all-expense trip to Palm Beach, Florida, including two weeks at the Royal Palm Hotel. What's wrong with that? Well, I wanted to win a lot of dough, so I told the jury a little white lie. I said that I was secretly married to a wealthy girl against the wishes of her cruel father who had always hated me. And that he had found out about it and snatched her away from me and taken her to Palm Beach. I thought that was a nice place. And that I was penniless and without a job and I needed the money to go to Florida to win you back from your father. <laughs> well, if that's your idea of a little white lie, I'd sure hate to hear me. Margie, you've got to help me. You've got to come to Florida and pretend you're my secret bride. Who else can I turn to? Well, I don't know, but you'd better start signaling for a sharp U-turn, because it's not going to be little Margie. Have you lost your brain buttons? You can't let me down now. They'll sue me for fraud and, and perjury and... Don't forget arson. They'll be burned up enough. This is no joking matter. The Love Conquers All people have planned a broadcast from Palm Beach with me and my bride. And if you don't show up, they may even throw me in jail. Well, I'd like to help you, Freddie, but I can't just go tootling off to Palm Beach. Dad's taking me to Bermuda for two weeks. Well, let him go on ahead. You can fly over from Palm Beach in a couple of hours. Just stay long enough to do that TV broadcast and get me off the spot. Please, Margie, please. You know, it might be fun at that. After all, Dad shouldn't mind changing his plans. Palm Beach is every bit as nice as Bermuda. And, and we really should see America first. I'll see if I can talk Dad into it. Hello? 
Oh, hello, Margie. What's up? Palm Beach? Have you gone crazy? Don't get excited, Dad. I, I was only thinking it seems sort of un-American to spend all that money on foreign soil. Besides, you know you get seasick, so we'll have to fly. And have you looked at the weather lately? Now you stop this nonsense and listen to me. I'm not going to change everything just because of some whim of yours. And besides, Mr. Honeywell has the tickets and the hotel reservations, and that settles it once and for all. Goodbye. In a word, he said no. But, Margie, you've got to think of some way to get to Palm Beach. I did this whole thing for you in the first place. Yeah, sure, Margie, I wanted to make some money so that when I take you out, we can go Dutch treat instead of you always paying the check. <laughs> There'll never be another like you, Freddie. Okay, I'll think of something. When do you leave? The love conquers all people. They're picking me up at 6 o'clock to put me on the plane. Well, you go on ahead. I'll figure some angle that'll change Dad's mind. At the moment, he thinks I've lost mine. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's a clue. What would happen if he really thought I'd lost my mind? Margie, I'm home. Start packing. We're leaving tomorrow. Margie, Margie, baby, uh, what happened? Oh, Margie, Margie, baby, oh, speak to me, baby, speak to me. Where am I? Who are you? I'm your father. Well, what happened, Margie? Margie? Who's Margie? Oh, baby, don't act like that. You're Margie. I'm your father. Father? I don't remember any father. My name isn't Margie. It's... it's... Ah! Oh, good heavens, that blow on the head must have affected her mind. Lie still, Margie. I'll, I'll call a doctor. Freddy? Freddy? Where's Freddy? I want to see Freddy. Oh, that's all she's been saying since I sent for you, Doctor. She just keeps repeating his name. And she doesn't know her own name or mine. It appears to be amnesia, all right. Induced by the blow on the head or possibly the fall from the ladder. Amnesia? <laughs> oh, how long will it last? Oh, sometimes it's only temporary. Sometimes it lasts for weeks, months. Isn't there anything you can do? Freddy? Freddy? Where's Freddy? Apparently, this Freddy is her only link with the past. Perhaps you better send for him at once. Where's Freddy? I want to see Freddy. I... Who are you? You're not Freddy. No, I'm Dr. Farrell. You've just suffered quite a shock. But you'll be all right when Freddy gets here, won't you? Oh, yes. I'm sure when I see Freddy, I... it kill me, Doctor. Is that kind gentleman really my father? Yes. Now you just relax. He's phoning Freddy right now. Hello. I want to speak to Freddy Wilson at once. It's an emergency. Uh, this is Mr. Albright. What? Well, gone to Palm Beach? Well, that's impossible. He couldn't scrape up the fare to go to Hoboken. A TV contest? Oh, I see. Royal Palm Hotel. Thank you. Is Freddy coming, sir? I mean, Father. Please forgive me, but I can't recall anything but Freddy. Now, my dear, don't excite yourself. Uh, Freddy Wilson's gone to Florida, Dr. Farrell. Uh, isn't there anything else we can do? At the moment, I'm afraid not. We can only hope for the best. Oh! oh I can't stand it. I, I can't stand seeing poor Margie like this. By George, I know what I'll do. I'll take Margie to Palm Beach to see Freddy. And then when she's well again, we'll fly over to Bermuda to join Mr. Honeywell. It's so wonderful of you to bring me here. You'll be all right as soon as you see Freddy. I've left word for him to come directly here. Oh, such beautiful scenery. And all those lucky people out there enjoying it. At least they know who they are. It 
so strange being a new person? You'll soon be my own little Margie again. Margie, that's a nice name. Was I a nice girl? Tell me, what was I really like? Well, you, uh, uh, uh that is, uh, uh sometimes... Uh... Uh, I think I'd better withdraw the question. Oh, that must be Freddy. You'd better sit down. This is apt to be quite a strain. Hi, Margie. How... Yep. Come back here, you idiot. <laughs> Please, Mr. Albright, don't hit me. I'll talk. I'll... Keep your voice down, you blabbermouth. I mean, oh, Freddie, dear pal, we, we mustn't let Margie get excited. She, she's got amnesia. Oh, oh, I see. I didn't know she was... Amnesia? <sighs> <laughs> You're Margie's only link with the past. She kept calling for you. It's up to you to bring her back, Freddy boy. Margie, do you remember this knucklehead? I mean, uh, uh, this uh, uh, dear friend from the past? Yes. Yes, I think I do. I remember his face. I remember his voice. But it's all sort of vague and blurry. I get a strange feeling someone hates you, Freddy. Surely it isn't me. Nope. It's your old man. He hates my... You know that isn't true. Don't, don't let Margie get the wrong impression of me. Tell her, tell her what, a, what a wonderful father I really am. What for? As soon as she gets her marbles back, she'll remember what a creep you are. Uh, Mr. Albright, I mean father, perhaps you'd better leave Freddie and me alone. Together we may be able to rebuild the past little by little. Well, all right. I... I guess it all depends on you, Freddy boy. Atta boy, Vern, you hit the bricks. Just leave everything up to little old Freddy. <sighs> Freddy, I just can't get over it. It's just like a miracle. I never thought I'd see the day. You mean Margie remembering me and not you? No, no, you're paying the dinner check tonight. Please, boys, don't squabble. It's such a beautiful night, so peaceful, so restful. Yeah, she's right, Vern. Maybe you better take five and leave us alone. I can't help her with you sitting around. You irritate me. Why, you uh, little... Uh-uh, uh, uh, temper, temper. You want me to bring Margie's memory back, don't you? Then shove off. The Wilson technique works best alone in the moonlight. Don't push Dad too far, Freddy. We've got to keep this going until your telecast is over, remember. Wilson technique, eh? Man, would your dad pop his stopper if he ever knew this whole routine was a phony. And just to help me out of a jam. Well, you're not out of it yet, Freddy. There's still that telecast tomorrow to cope with. Exactly what do I have to do, anyway? Oh, not much. It's a breeze. Just show up with those ever-loving lips pooched out, give me a fat smack, and tell our unseen audience how much you love me. <laughs> Poor Dad. I really feel guilty playing a trick like this on him. Oh, what harm has it done the old boy? You yourself said that Palm Beach was as nice as Bermuda, and after this is all over, he can fly you over there for the rest of your vacation. I guess you're right, Freddy. Just the same, I wish I hadn't had to fake amnesia to get him here. That's what I said, Mr. Honeywell. Just another one of Margie's little gags. But this time, I'm going to pull the topper. We'll join you there in Bermuda in a couple of days. But first, have I got an idea? Have I? The prescribed therapy in amnesia cases is to relive the past. And we're going to relive a day in Margie's past. And the script is going to be rewritten by yours truly. Margie, have some breakfast. Where are all my clothes? And what's this thing? Oh, yes, yes, that's for you to wear today. Me? But this is a child's dress. Of course. It's part of Dr. Farrell's plan to restore your memory by reliving the past. Last night, I had a sudden hunch and called him on the phone. I don't understand. You will, dear, you will. Last night, it suddenly dawned on me that the reason that Freddy hadn't brought your memory back is because we didn't have the right Freddy. Not the right Freddy? No, the Freddy that your poor shaken mind is groping for is Freddy Hassengruber. Freddy Hassengruber? Yes, you remember that freckle-faced kid that you used to play with when you were a little girl? Well, I remember the Hassengruber family, but I thought the boy's name was Willie. There, you see how faulty your poor memory is? His name was Freddy. And one day when you two were playing together, he was responsible for your having a severe emotional shock. 
And you, you think that's why I only remember Freddy. Exactly. All we have to do is relive that lost day in your life, and you'll be cured. But couldn't you just tell me what happened? I mean, after all, you can't find Freddy Hassan Gruber and bring him down here. Oh, I thought of that, too, so I've arranged to have Freddy Wilson help out. I want you to meet your very first boyfriend, Freddy Hassan Gruber. Now, if you'll hurry and get dressed, I'll take you two kiddies out to play. What a rugged day this has been. You and Freddy Hassan Gruber sure had a misspent childhood. Quit stalling. Eat up all your nice, soft mush and mashed apricots. You and your bright ideas. If you hadn't dreamed up this stupid amnesia gag... Me stupid! Next time you and your big mouth get into a mess, you could just call on somebody else for help. But you've got to go through with the telecast. You promised. We go on tonight. I will, I will. What time do I have to be there? At 8 o'clock. That gives us just about an hour. So let's get this over with and get out of here. The television station's only... Did you two kitties finish your delicious yum-yum? I brought you some wonderful dessert. Chocolate custard. Oh, I had it made special. It's exactly what you and Freddy Hassengruber had on that fateful night many years ago. Fateful? What do you mean? My little Margie made a piggy out of herself. She took Freddy's custard and ate it all up herself. <laughs> Good. I mean, shame on you, Margie. And what did Daddy do? He made his naughty little girl eat up all the custard in the kitchen. <laughs> On top of mush and mashed apricots? Yes, indeedy. He made her eat and eat until her little tummy was bursting. Now go on, Margie. We've got to relive the past. It's for your own good. <sighs> Didn't he have to do something? Did he just sit there and grin like a silly ape? There, your memory's coming back. You're getting mad at Freddy. Go ahead, Margie, go ahead and do what you did then. Do what? Don't you remember? You got so angry at Freddy that you scooped up a great big spoonful of custard and pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> goody, goody, goody. <laughs> Then you took another spoonful and did it again. <laughs> oh, but you were a spitfire. <laughs> Freddy Hassengruber must have been an awful jerk if he took this lying down. But he didn't, Freddy. He did what any normal boy would do under the circumstances. Go ahead, Freddy boy. Go ahead. <laughs> But he started it off. You won't back out now, will you? But don't be silly. When I make a promise, I keep it. We've got to get to that TV station. We can clean up after we get there. Come on. Just a moment. 
Where do you two think you are going? Uh, going? Well, we thought we'd go and take a swim and, and, and wash off the custard. You know, sort of a large finger bowl. That is not the way it happened. Freddy Hassengruber went home and you went to Betty Bye. Mr. Albright, you can't lock her up. I, I protest, I... I oh. Quit worrying, will you? She'll be here for the telecast. She promised. But we go on the air in five minutes. If your wife doesn't appear, you'll have some explaining to do. Let me go! I'm supposed to be on this program! Now, oh, here, here. Stop this commotion, little girl. Children under 12 years of age are not admitted unless accompanied by their parents. Now, oh, wait a minute. Margie! Oh, I was afraid you were going to goof this one. Mr. Creevy, meet my ever eleven. Mrs. Wilson, Mr. Creevy. Mrs. Wilson? Good grief, a child bride. Oh, no, Mr. Creevy. I'm really a full-grown woman. My cruel father forces me to dress this way. He won't admit even to himself that I'm old enough to marry. He wants to keep me as a child. Yeah, yeah, her old man's a real oddball. His brain's come all unglued. He's actually insane. Oh, no, no, just on the subject of dear Freddy. He locked me in my room tonight to keep me from flying into the arms of my darling. But no one can stand in our way. What a picture. Love conquers all in the living flesh. Well, let's hurry, friends. We're almost on the air. And so tonight, we bring you this happy couple, this poor but proud young American and his secret bride, who no longer is a secret. Secret bride? Well, I just want to thank the sponsors of this wonderful, wonderful program for making our marriage possible. Married? All I can say is, love conquers all. Yes, sir. Let me at him. Let me at that no-good double-crosser. <laughs> Shh, quiet. We're on the air. Who the devil are you? I'm the secret bride's father. That's who I am. Her father? Stand aside. I'm going to clobber that Freddie Wilson. Cameraman crew, turn all your cameras on me. I want the world to see me strike a blow for young love. <laughs> Why don't you come back here? Dad, don't. Let him go. It's not what you're thinking. So you faked amnesia just to get down here to your secret husband, did you? Well, not exactly to my husband. Amnesia? I... Are you a victim of amnesia? Well, not exactly amnesia either. Forget about the amnesia. How long have you been married to this crawling insect? But if she's suffering from amnesia, then she's not legally Mrs. Wilson. Margie, don't let him put me in jail. Think of something. Well, as I said before, I... 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 Stop stalling, young woman. Are you Mrs. Wilson or are you not? Speak up. Who are you? Who, me? I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Coming, Grandma! Of all the weirdies you've pulled, this last one was the topper. Now simmer down, Dad. I just couldn't let Freddie go to jail. Anyway, you got your vacation in Bermuda, so what are you mad about? What am I mad about? That side trip to Florida cost me plenty, and every penny of it was completely unnecessary. Now laugh this off. I'm taking it out of your allowance. Do you hear that? It's all coming out of your allowance, Margie. Margie? Who's Margie? I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Well, <laughs> any way you slice it, that's my little Margie. <laughs> 